G'day guys, Mac with the Outer Circle, and today we're going to be looking at starting a 30k force. So this isn't a video on what to buy when you build an army, this is just a video about how I am building a particular army to give you guys an idea about the processes I'm going through. So I've put together an army list. The army list, uh, the thought behind it is breaches, forming shield walls, advancing forward across the table backed by mostly machine gun fire. So with that in mind, I went for quad rapiers. The idea was I have done iron warriors in the past, very traditional iron warriors, had siege tyrants, had some artillery, things like that. This time out, I'm staying away from tanks, there's none. Artillery, there's none. Tyrants, there are no siege tyrants in this army. Uh, I don't even have Iron Circle in the army. Maybe down the line, I might. And I've designed an army to go up to about 2,500 points. And the initial force is going to be hanging around the 2,000 point mark. So, how am I going to make an effective 2,000 point army? Well, first things first, decals. I have several of these Iron Warrior decal sheets, so I'm sorted out in that regard. In fact, there's very, very little I need to buy because my bits box is so big. I bought about 7,000 Australian dollars worth of miniatures in 2013, and that was when the Australian dollar was very strong against the British pound still, so I got a lot of bang for my buck, and I've pretty much been living off that reserve and supplementing it ever since with bits and pieces, stuff off buy, swap, sell, and things that just catch my eye. This way I've been able to build several armies without actually having to go to Forge World for a while. In fact, the last couple of things I've bought has been decal sheets, and that's about it. Now, I don't even need to do that in this instance because I'm revisiting an older army, and I'm trying to do something completely different with my Iron Warriors, a different style of silver, uh, much more grungy, much more siege oriented, much more, I want that feeling of an, of an army running across no man's land at the end, uh, at, at the actual point of the assault, the spear tip, as opposed to the artillery bombardment that happens before the assault, which is what most Iron Warriors armies seem to be. So decals, that's easy. What about HQs? Well, I have one of these in my bits box. I have a lot of iron hand miniatures in my bits box. A uh, couple reasons behind that. So originally I wanted to make a full iron hands army, but I didn't end up going down that route for a few different reasons. I had the old decal sheet for instance, and then they brought out a new decal sheet and I sort of soured on it. Then uh, book seven came out and I committed wholly doing my thousand suns. And then straight after that, I went to white scars. Uh, but when I was doing my white scars, I revisited my iron hands project and I created my Sagi Mazan list, which was a shattered legion force with white scars and iron hands. And I built up a nice little army out of that. But a lot of the miniatures, I only used 10 Gorgons and 10 Medusa mortals in that. And I have a lot of stuff left over, including this Iron Father model, um, another one converted out of one of the event exclusive miniatures, and they're all in bits still, literally in bits in my boxes. And I might even pull my bits boxes out, um, at least three or four of them, and show them in a video soon, so you get an idea of how I store my miniature components and how I sort them. So I have that. Um, I also have some of these guys. So originally I bought them not to form the bulk of my tactical squads, but to form things like the sergeants and just one or two guys sprinkled throughout the squads. And I was going to combine them with all the Mark III I have left over out of my Burning of Prospero boxes, which I bought a few of. Um, well, I didn't end up, like I said, going down that route. I only used my Medusa Immortals and the Gorgons. So I still have these guys left over. They're going to be the basis of several of my characters, and I'm going to combine them with parts of the uh, Master of Signal here. I think his head and the uh, sort of com arm will go really good on this guy on the on the right hand side with the ore specs. He'll probably match up with that well. Uh, the chain mail hanging from the the belt and that uh, that helmet should look really good. I don't know if I'll use the Legion Champion uh, backpack, the sorry, the Master of Signals backpack. I 
think I'll probably go with that Vexilia on here and try and use that because it just looks really cool and grimdark, which is very Iron Warriors, most evil bastards in the setting. Um, I also have one of these, not my favorite model. I only have one of this and I have about three of this. So these are probably some of my more recent purchases. Um, probably when I was doing my white scars, I think I bought these guys. So two, three years back now. And I've used this model quite a bit. Uh, I like the look of it. But this one has never really grown on me. I think it's because he has very regular power armored legs, very small Mark IV legs. And because he's up armored on the torso and shoulders, he looks very top heavy, very big and bulky. And it's never really floated my boat. But there are parts of this model um, I really like. I like the helmet. I do like the shoulder pads. Um, the backpack with the servo arm, if I can get a, a 360 view of it. And all like the dragging cables and such. So I could see that model. Um, I like the, the sort of double, double vent, double grill thing happening. This combined with some of um, these miniatures here, I think I can make a really cool looking power armored iron father out of. I'll probably use, actually I think I'll probably use the guy who's got the... Vexilia at the top, at the very frontmost guy there. Uh, he would be a pretty good fit. Uh, conversion parts wise, I also have Iron Warriors and Iron Hands helmets. Obvious reasons, I used to have an Iron Hands and an Iron Warriors army. So I have heaps of these things in my bits box, as well as I don't want to think how many Mark IV, Mark III uh, helmets, even Mark II. And that's not even with all the ones I have clipped off the sprues yet. I have a lot of those uh, sitting there. I think the... what It's a tough choice, but I'd probably go for more of the Iron Warrior skull-faced helmet. That would probably look best in one of these. And I, it would be very hard to do on that guy, actually, because his head tilt there, that is sculpted on. That head is a part of the rest of the torso. So some thoughts I need ahead of me there. I also have one of these. Um, I bought it. I haven't used it. It's sitting there in a blister pack. I'll probably rip that out, see what I want to do with it. Uh, I'm not going to be using him as the Pravian. I'm going to actually use Narek Draeger because, well, I have him uh, in my bits box. So this guy here, yeah, not quite sure. Maybe I'll use him as a Siege Breaker or something. I'll I'll get rid of his Pravian backpack. I might even put it on Narek Draeger. It could look good. I haven't decided. But I do like the Mark V armor, the heavy use of bionics. Probably do the helmet swap to something more Iron Warrior. And yeah, that'll be, that'll be a good little conversion. Okay, so in the Force, because I'm taking Narek Draeger as a Pravian console... I will include some Castellax Battle Automata with Darkfire Cannons. I'll put three of them in there, and I'll go for bolt guns in the arms. And they're going to form the majority of the anti-tank, and the anti-heavy sort of heavy infantry, like Terminators, that kind of thing. Because uh, the Darkfire Cannon is a really strong... Basically, it's like a giant plasma gun. Uh, very long range. It has It's a lance weapon. So closer to Eldar tech than Marine tech in a lot of ways. They'll be a really cool, really strong bodyguard with the Pravian. Uh, ties in nicely to the, the big battle bots that walk across the battlefield and break open a pillbox with their bare hands and then brass up whatever's inside. Because I'm going to have a Cortex controller in the force, um, I'm going to include some of these guys. Thalax with phased plasma fusils. So in the 2000 point force, it'll just be two sets of three of these. That's nice and easily done. They will... They will form sort of a quick response unit, but thanks to them being in the force, they will have the improviser, uh, gin side, all that kind of thing. So they'll form a big bubble of don't infiltrate, which is really handy in deployment because it counters some of the sneakier tactics of armies like the uh, Raven Guard or the Alpha Legion, stops them getting too close to you on deployment and gives you a little breathing space to bring your firepower to bear, which is what you need as an Iron Warriors player. Uh, they also have a lot of mobility, thanks to having jetpacks, so I can jump them forward, contest objectives, uh, and generally be a really good harassing unit. 
and because I'll equip them with heavy chain blades, they'll actually be quite a threat to things like vehicles in melee. They won't be the go-to for that, so where the uh, Castellax are forming a very specific role, anti-tank, anti-terminator, these guys are partially fulfilling that role and partially fulfilling just chasing down regular power armor. Then we have the actual troops. So it's going to be 20 breaches in the 2000 point force and 30 breaches in the 2500 point force. Thing is, I only have 20 breaches in my bits box. So I'm going to have to buy another set of 10 so i'll have to keep an eye out on a buy swap sell for that i think um, but breaches are pretty commonly sold online so you can usually find them with relative ease um, breaches tactical squads uh, both very commonly available terminator squads though they tend to stay very pricey uh, for some reason people don't knock them down much on discounts which is interesting as sellers um and I don't particularly want to go to Forge World because of my ongoing beef with things like their regional pricing, huge shipping delays, things like that. So we'll see how I go. Uh, then we have the Quad Heavy Bolter. So this really kicks in when it comes to um, I wanted that machine gun feel. So it gives me something, I, perhaps you could call it artillery, but I just think of it as like a heavy machine gun in World War One. It's it can be towed up to the front lines. It can be even carried along with the assault. It's mobile, um, but it is cumbersome. It's great when it's putting out direct firepower, but doesn't always get that opportunity. And I will probably use some of those Iron Warriors helmet upgrades and such on these guys because it will look really cool. Uh, and the way I'll differentiate between the two units is I know right now one will be very plain. One of the rapier pairs will be very much like this picture of an Iron Hands rapier. Basically silver. Silver with some scratches, some chipping, things like that. And the other one, the shroud that goes over the heavy bolters, which the scope is or sight is mounted onto for the weapon, I'll paint that in hazard stripes. So it sticks to the theme of the force, but it really breaks up the different rapiers so you can tell which unit is which with ease. And then the last thing to include in this force will be a Derrideo Dreadnought. I'm going to go with the twin uh, Arachnus Heavy Laz Cannons and probably an Adamantic Pavase for a couple of reasons. And uh, I will go with Shrapnel Heavy Bolters. In fact, all the Heavy Bolters in this army will be Shrapnel Rounds. That's Rapiers, Derrideo, you name it. So that will give me pinning, but I'll lose the AP4, which is going to make me much less effective against Mechanicum forces if I choose to go that route. But army-wide, or well, across my army, having a lot of pinning firepower could be very handy. Uh, again, against Mechanicum, it is going to hurt me because things like Thalax, instead of forcing them to take feel no pain saves, they're going to be getting regular armor saves, and with stubborn and that, I don't see them getting pinned, so it's a harsh trade-off there. The list I'm making will be very strong against Marines, but I know going into it, I am shooting myself in the foot against Mechanicum forces. So there you go, that's all there is to it, to a 2,000 point army. Derrideo with Arachnus uh, Lies Cannons, and oh, I didn't mention the Adamantic Paves, what I'm doing with it. So, by taking that, I know that things like my Legion Breaches, which normally have a 6-plus invulnerable save, will actually get a 5-plus invulnerable save while they're huddled around him. So, if I'm camping an objective in the back line with the squad, or they're forming a protection party for the Dreadnought, they'll be getting 5-up invulnerable saves. They'll be a lot more resilient than Marines in Power Armor or something like that when they're in that situation. This guy also forms uh, my anti-air response, as well as a little bit of anti-tank. His main job is going to be shooting down planes. When I make the jump up to 2,500 points, he gets supplemented by 10 Iron Havocs with crack missile launchers. So, kind of like Tyrant Siege Tyrant's Light. And I can do that easily, because I have a squad of missile launchers in Mark II Power Armor from the old Iron Warriors project that I never used. So recycling or upcycling them, uh, that's a win. And it helps me clear out my bits boxes. 
I used to have three tubs full. Now I'm down to like a few trays worth. But anyway. So that will supplement him nicely. And the rest of the 500 points is just made up by that other breaches squad. So crack missiles, flak missiles, interceptor, augury scanner, that kind of thing on the Havocs makes them pretty potent. But still, at the 2,000 points, it's a, mass, a uh, warsmith with servo arm, digital lasers. He'll have mm, maybe a refractor field, maybe an iron halo. Power weapon, I'm not going for a paragon weapon, I don't care. If I'm trying to, I might even go the digital lasers to be honest, because why am I trying to use my warsmith to fight close combats in a shooting army? If I'm going to be fighting close combats, I really want to be putting something like the Thalax in there that are going to hit like a freight train, just with high strength, lots of attacks, decent resilience, as opposed to going to 1v1 situations with Space Marine characters, which usually end in mutually assured destruction. Don't need it. It's just silly. Um, Because every cat and his dog carries a Paragon Blade, and... They roll six to wound, it becomes instant death, then you both die from cutting each other with swords. I don't want that. I'm just going to go Power Axe, Servo Harness, so then you can do things like repair the Dreadnought or put a Hull Point back on something. That will be handy. So it'll be, yeah, Warsmith, Narek Draeger, and I'll use him as Narek Draeger, because mm, why not? I've never used him as that. I, I really love the model, and I'd like to try it out. Uh, I could always just swap him to a regular Pravian to save a few points as well. Three Darkfire Castellax, again, anti-tank, anti-terminator, anti-light armor. The 20 Breaches, six Thalax with two phase plasma fusils. The Derradeo, and two sets of two Heavy Bolter Rapiers. And that's a 2,000 point army. And like I said, I'll convert up several characters out of my bits box, utilizing uh, all these models that you see. Combine bits and pieces of them all together. And I'll, I'll create some interesting power armored characters because, again, that's something you don't see a lot of is power armored iron warriors. A lot of people go very terminator heavy with their headquarters uh, units because they usually do things like get a terminator armored uh, warsmith because they're hard as rocks, they're bulky, so they count as two models, so it helps you out when you get outnumbered by, say, Sons of Horus or Night Lords. And it means that. Uh, they often, sorry, take that Terminator armor because they fit in well with Siege Tyrants and such. I don't want that. I don't need that. I'm not even running Siege Tyrants in this force, and I don't plan to. I would actually be tempted, after all the criticism I've given, to, if I went up to 3,000 points, put a unit of Dominators in here. The new weird Terminator unit that was released by Forge World as the former bodyguard of Perturabo. Uh Something about having them in the force being forced to work alongside um, alongside Automata is pretty funny to me, but I could make great use of them as sort of an Assault Terminator force with their Thunder Hammers and Chain Fists in this army. But I'm not wedded to the idea. I'd be happy to use just any old regular you know, Tartarus or Cataphracty Terminators, either or. Like I said, I'm, I'm not wedded to the idea, but... What I am wedded to is that idea of a World War I trench charge. One trench to the other, the last moments of an assault. Uh, so the artillery stopped firing, it's all down to the machine guns and the man on the ground to finish the fight. That's what this force is, and that's why I'm going for breaches over tactical marines. I could get 30 tactical marines in this army, or 20 breaches at 2,000 points. 30 tactical marines isn't going to have the resilience and the survivability of the breaches. Uh, they don't look as cool. They give me much less to do paint-wise. I won't be able to do things like cool hazard stripes all over those tactical marines without it looking a bit garish and over the top, whereas on the breaching shields, it will look really, really sexy to have those uh, hazard stripes on the shields. So, yeah, that's the thought process that's going into this army in the background. Of course, what you guys generally see on the channel is the finished result. I put up a showcase, I show you the army, and you know, here's something I painted. What do you reckon? Uh, here's the fluff behind it, yada yada. Well, this is the genesis of the idea. This is the starting point of the project. And like I said, it's, it's the little things. Like, I don't want to be making the traditional Iron Warriors army in the necessarily traditional paint scheme. 
instead of having you know silvers everywhere i've mixed in greens purples and browns quite a bit into them to make it's a very dirty looking silver without just looking like someone grabbed the uh, agrax earth shade and just coated everything in 14 coats of it which a lot of people uh, fall into the trap of and trench basing is probably the route i'm going to go down so duck boards and muddy puddles and things like that underfoot i think would uh it'd be a nice alternative to the traditional we're walking across you know bare sand like these iron hands on screener or the we're walking over rocks or the we're walking through a ruined city which are the three main sort of basing schemes you seem to see and yeah i want to avoid those anyway i make a theater circle thank you all for watching this uh, genesis of an army perhaps i'll call it and I'll see you on the next one.